So let's talk about transferring Pro Tools sessions. So today's video is going to be a very introductory video, a very like Pro Tools Basics videos. It's going to be a great video for beginners, um, but I do think it's essential to make because I have seen, I have had so much struggle with students and it seems like no matter how many times we talk about it in the classroom, there always seems to be issues with transferring our Pro Tools sessions. So I'm mostly making this video so I can show it to students in the future. Um, if you're one of my students, hi. Um, thanks for clicking on the video and actually watching it. I really appreciate it. It saves us a lot of time in class. But this video is actually really good for anyone that's starting out with Pro Tools. It's a really important thing to know. It's really critical to know. And we're going to talk a little bit about session structure as well. So we're not just talking about transferring sessions, but we're also going to talk about the structure of how the sessions are put together. Because it is very, very easy to accidentally transfer a session wrong and, for example, not have any of your audio. So when you open up Pro Tools, this is the logo for Pro Tools. You can tell that my Pro Tools is open right now because there's a little dot here that's below the, the logo. So we know that it's open. If I click on it, you'll see that we have Pro Tools is open up here. That's how I know it's open. Right now I don't have any session open. When you create a session in Pro Tools, and I have other videos showing how to create sessions in Pro Tools, I'll link to them or something for you, it will create a folder. So here's my folder. So this is my YouTube example 2025 folder. So when you open the folder, it's going to look different if it's an open session or a closed session. So right now my session is closed. It is not open. And so you'll see I kind of just have the basics here. So there are a few sub items within this folder. The one that you'll always see is going to be the audios files folder that is automatically created when you create your actual session. Same thing with the session file backups. So within the audio files folder, that's where all your audio files are stored. If you import things the way that I recommend. It'll copy the audio file into this folder. And so then you know that you have your audio files with you if you transfer your session. Um, so this is where Pro Tools will actually reference those audio files where it looks to find the audio files. Here is where we have our session file backups. This is where Pro Tools will store automatic backups for you. If you go into your settings, you can actually choose how many backups it keeps in this folder and how frequently it creates those backups. We also have a wave cache file. This just helps Pro Tools open faster. So it's remembering things about what state the session was in. It just helps it open faster. You can literally delete this file and nothing bad will happen. It'll just take a little bit longer for your session to open the next time you open it. And then this is the PTX file. So this is the actual session file. So this is kind of like the equivalent of like the dot .doc or dot .docx file with your Word documents, right? So this is what you actually click on to open your session. And when you click to open your session, you'll notice that Pro Tools is going going to create a whole bunch of new folders within this main session folder. So this YouTube example 2025 folder is the main session folder that I'm referencing here. So here's my session. It just opened it. And if I command tab to look at my folder, you'll notice now there are a bunch more folders in here, right? So we have a video files folder. We have a clip groups folder. We have a bounced files folder. Depending on what you do within your session, these may or may not go away when you then close your session. So if I bounce out a file, that's how, how we describe creating like a render, for example, if you're familiar with video terms. When I bounce out a file, I create that stereo file of everything that I'm working on in here. I'll put it in here. And if I have done that, then this folder will remain. If I have not done that, then Pro Tools will automatically delete the folder when I close the session. Same thing with video files. If you don't use it, it'll get rid of it. Clip groups, same thing. So there are some uh, folders, some sub items that will appear and then disappear depending on what you're doing within the session. So if I go and close this, I'll, I'll demonstrate for you. I close this. I have not bounced anything out. I have not created any clip groups and I've not imported a video. See how those folders are already gone. So that's something to keep in mind. So when we talk about saving our Pro Tools session and closing it before we transfer our session, um, one way that we can tell if someone has done that is whether or not when they transfer the files, if they have empty folders like this, that's a good way to tell that they probably didn't save and close out properly before they transferred the session. And the problem with that is if you are working and you don't hit save, and then you go, all right, I'm going to submit my session. And I, for example, if I were to submit this folder right now, 
let me make a change in this session. So let's say I made that change. It's super important to my composition. If I were to then submit this folder right now without closing my session or saving it, and closing it will prompt me to save it. That's why I recommend closing it so you know that it's the most up-to-date version of your session. If I have not saved it, then what's going to happen is I'm going to transfer my session. I'm going to be missing these edits that I have not yet saved. So I hope that makes sense. That's why we recommend going File, Close Session, and it'll ask you if you should save it. So we hit save and then it closes out and then we transfer our session. So that's really, really important to make sure that you aren't submitting work or transferring work to someone else that is however much time behind, right? It's like an old version of your project and not the current. So I do recommend doing that before you transfer a session. The other thing to keep in mind, and I see this happening all the time, is that if you just transfer this PTX file, so for example, when a student submits a session to me, if they just submit the PTX file, I don't have any of their audio files. So I'll open it up. So for example, if I delete this and I try to open this up, let's see if it does what, what normally happens. Yep, it's gonna say, hey, we're missing all our audio files. What do we do? And if I'm on a different computer at this point, it, it might look for the audio files, but it's not gonna find them. You know, Unless they're on the computer, we're not gonna find them. They're gone, right? So good luck working on this with a collaborator, right? If this is what's happened, good luck getting me to grade your project if this is what's happened, right? You don't have your audio files. You're missing the 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 biggest component, the most arguably the most important component of a Pro Tools session, right? The audio files. So I'm gonna hit okay. Automatically find and relink is a good way to do things. But unfortunately right now, this is in my trash folder, so we're out of luck. So if I close this, that's fine. I'm gonna do undo. And so here are my audio files. And so now we are reunited again. So the big takeaway here is that when you're transferring a Pro Tools session to another computer or submitting something to a teacher or a collaborator or, you know, for whatever reason, there are a bunch of reasons why we transfer Pro Tools sessions. Um, maybe you're working in a studio and you want to go home and do some editing for whatever reason. If you're transferring your Pro Tools session, do not just transfer the PTX file. You want to transfer this whole folder that houses the audio files, the session file backups, whatever other folders you have in here, and the PTX file. That is the big takeaway. And I know how silly this sounds, but I can't even tell you how often I have seen people make this mistake. And it's not just students. I've had people be like, oh yeah, I'm going to send you my session so you can send me a quote. And I'm like, great, send it on over. And they just sent the PTX file. And I'm like... I don't know, like you gotta you gotta send the whole session. This this is not the whole session. The PTX is not the whole session. The PTX is basically housing the data for how the audio files were edited and changed and you know what plugins are on there and all that stuff. Whereas the actual audio files are in here. So bare minimum, you want a PTX and an audio files folder. So what I recommend doing is closing the session, hitting save if you wanna hit save. And then when you're transferring your session, you can either transfer the whole folder, you know, put it on a hard drive. A couple of great ways to transfer sessions are through wetransfer.com. That's a great way to transfer a session. You can upload a whole folder that way. Um, filemail.com is another good one. I use filemail.com when wetransfer doesn't allow the file size that I need to send because filemail.com has a slightly larger free uh, transfer size. I don't pay for either one. I just use the free services. A lot of people do pay for them and really enjoy the benefits that they get from doing that. But yeah, those are great ways to send things. Google Drive is a great, great way to send things. Most people have a Google Drive nowadays, so you can upload your folder to Google Drive and share that folder with whoever you're sharing the session with. That's another really good way to do that. You just want to make sure that you set the permissions properly, right? You want to make sure that whoever is receiving your file is able to actually view it. And the other thing to keep in mind, and this is mostly just for my students, but it's going to be relevant to other people out there as well, is that with systems, some systems, for example, Canvas, which is commonly used in schools nowadays, and that's how a lot of students submit their coursework nowadays. How do I word this? You can only upload one file at a time when you're submitting something for an assignment. So what I have my students do is I have them right click on the actual session folder, and then you hit compress and it's gonna create a zipped version of your session. So there's my zip, and then the zip is what you want to submit. So if you're only able to, whatever the system is, for whatever reason, sometimes you can only upload actual files, you can't upload a folder, what you can do is you can zip that session folder, and that's your single file that you upload. So I hope that helps. I do want to remind my students that if you're submitting something, please put your name in the actual session folder. That really helps. So that's that. It's pretty simple. You just want to make sure that if you're transferring a session, you transfer the whole folder and not individual items within the folder. The 
other thing to keep in mind is that if you are saving a session, so let's say I have this session here and I just do a save as somewhere. So I would recommend just saving the session where it currently is. Then you avoid a whole rat's nest, a whole headache that, that can become a huge pain, trust me. But sometimes I see people doing save session as. And when you do save session as, it only saves the PTX file. If you want to save the whole session folder in a different location, what you want to do is you want to do save session copy in, and then you have all these things to worry about. It's a big pain. Usually we don't do it, to be honest. Um, from my experience, we don't we often avoid doing that. Um, so if you're doing a save session as, I use this all the time because I will, for example, I'll put the date, oops, me and typing, I'll put the date at the beginning of a, a session name and then every day that I work on something, I will update the date. So what happens is by the end of working on something for a while, I will have a folder with a bunch of different PTX files. And these kind of serve as a more macro version of a session file backups because I have, you know, one from each day that I worked on the session. So I use that all the time. But if you were, for example, I've seen people do this a lot, do a save session as, and then you save it somewhere else on your computer. So let's say I save it in on the desktop, right? I go and save that. Watch what happens. If I click and go to my desktop, it just saved the PTX file. So see, we have the folder we were working in, we have the zip that we just made, and then we have things that are already here, and then we just have the PTX file. So if you accidentally do that, and then you hit Command S from then on while you're working, and then you transfer this session, this is the old version. This is the one that you've been saving. So you just want to be very, very careful. If you're, for example, going file, save session as, just be very aware of where you're saving it. And I would recommend not moving it at all. If you want to move the session to a new location, what I would do is if you do this by accident, I would dra drag and drop it into that session. You can hit replace. And if you want to move your session to a new location on your computer, I would actually go to your session, make sure it's closed, and then take this folder and move the whole folder wherever you want to move it. That's what I would do. I would not do a save session as because that's not really what it's for. If you want to make a copy of your session, you know, we saw the save session copy. What I would do is I would literally just copy and then paste the folder somewhere, right? Usually we don't have to do that. There aren't a lot of instances where we actually want to do that besides like transferring onto a hard drive to transfer it, right? But I um, just want to put that out there just in case. So yeah, I think that's it. This is probably a pretty short video, but we are kind of overdue for a shorty video. So thanks so much for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. If you're one of my students, just ask me during class. And you know, I do have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash noise. If you feel like supporting the channel, that's a great place to go. I would really appreciate it. We have some additional material for my Patreon patrons on there. We Last month, we did a bunch of Zoom sessions. Uh, we have a Discord channel, Discord server that we're all hanging out on. We have a book club on the Discord server. We've been reading all audio engineering and music production type books, and that's been a lot of fun. I've really been enjoying that myself. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday, and thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. So Nam is coming up in a couple weeks. I think it might actually be less than a couple weeks at this point, and I'm really excited. I'm speaking on a panel at the Nam Idea Center on Friday afternoon. I think it's at like four o'clock, and that's the Careers in Music Summit. So I'm really pumped for that. I'm also going to be at a networking event. It's a network with the pros event for students, and I'm going to be one of the featured pros at the event, doing a bunch of meetings per usual. I'm really excited about hanging out with people, seeing all the people that I see every year there. And, uh, you know, just just nerding out with everyone. So if you're going to Nam, let me know. I'm really excited and I will be there. I might actually be releasing this video the week of Nam. So if you're watching this publicly, it might be currently Nam. I don't know. If you're on my Patreon, then you'll see this early. So, yeah. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next thing. Bye.